Welcome back to video number two. In video number two, uh, we kind of still have a look at performance testing and we kind of going to take it a bit step further. So um, I'm just going to go to my slide quick. And when I left you in the previous video, we had a look at load testing, stress testing, soap testing, spike testing, configuration testing, and isolation testing. So that was the basic testing terminologies that we had a look at. And, um, you know, we kind of understood, okay, yeah, when doing testing, there's a lot of ter um, a lot of theory that's involved. And uh, the next thing that kind of goes in your mind is, well, you know, if there's so many testing involved, or there's so many ways of doing the testing, so many... Um, how can I say, um, sub-subjects of testing, there must be a good planning, right? And yeah, you're correct. There is a lot of planning that's involved in testing and in doing proper testing, right? Especially if you're working with a very um, large uh, application and or corporate. So let's start off by having a look at how to set your goals, right? Uh, it is important without anything, <laughs> um, in life, right? Not just testing, it's uh, setting performance goals. And that's kind of what we're going to have a look at when um, you know, talking about what we're gonna do. So um, with setting performance goals, right? Let's have a look at that. Performance testing can uh, serve different purposes. And that's what we need to understand, that performance testing is such a large, large, um, how can I say, um, quantity or such a large um, subject matter that, you know, it's kind of ambiguous to say, like, you know, I want certain, you know, testing to do on this side, you know. So um, understand that performance testing is quite a, um, it can serve a lot of different purposes. So you need to kind of determine what is your purpose and then work accordingly with uh, terminology, theory, and uh, great planning. So let's have a look at it. Um, now, how to set your uh, performance goals. So it can demonstrate that the system meets performance criteria. So performance testing can serve different purposes, like I said. And when we look at per, uh, performance criteria, it is it can demonstrate that the system meets performance criteria, right? So um, we need to have a set of criteria. We're going to go like, okay, this is a certain criteria that we're going to follow. And uh, the goals that we're going to do is performance criteria. That it is, uh, will it meet that performance criteria? The second thing is compared to systems. So when we, when we unravel what is compared to system, it can, uh, it can compare to systems to find which platform, which performs better, right? So, um, that's a different, uh, you know, purposes, like uh, which system would work the best, right? So, uh, and the third one is measurement. And uh, or measurement um, is parts of the system or workload causes by system to perform badly, right? So that is kind of how you can set out your goals. You can set your goals out by going performance criteria. What are we going to get out of this? Uh, compared to systems, okay, well, we've got more than certain systems here. Let's let's test and see what's the best. And measurement, uh, you can kind of measure, okay, what, what is performing badly and scratch it out. So many performance tests are undertaken without consideration to the testing of realistic performance goals, right? A lot of people start off, or a lot of corporations start off with testing without actually setting down goals. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to, or you're not going to get to where you want without setting uh, predetermined, predetermined goals, right? So the first question um, from a business perspective should always be, why are we perform doing this performance testing? Why are we doing this, right? So these considerations are part of a, of a business case of testing. Performance goals are or will be different. Um, depending on the system's technology or purpose, however, it should always include some of the following. So, it will always be different, right? But it will always have some of, um, of the following, uh, which is included, right? So, it's, um, it should always include the following. Concurrency uh, through output or throughput. Um, server response time render response time and last but not least performance specifications let's take that away and then questions to ask so question to ask is a bit of you know it's, it's a different subject but so con i'm just going to go through that again so that i don't confuse you concurrency through output okay or uh throughput uh, server response time render response time 
and performance specifications and then questions to ask so let's have a look at concurrency now I'm going to use a website as an example right um, <clears throat> if a system identifies a end user by some form of logging procedure then the concurrency goal is highly desirable so a website like Facebook okay um, it identifies by someone logging in uh, procedure then concurrency goal is highly desirable by definition this is largest number of concurrency systems use users that um, the system is expected to support at any given moment right so the workflow of the scripted tra uh, transaction may impact the true concurrency especially if the uh, interactive part contains a login or log out con activity so it's all about logging Let, let's use this I'm still going to use the example of logging in and logging out um, you know it's all about the concurrency like what is going to happen when somebody logs in and what's going to happen when somebody logs out okay uh, what is the process that follows with it how are we going to set goals in that process right do you follow me do you understand why I'm, doing, why I'm saying concurrency through output I'm saying logging and logging out user. Um, if the system has no concept of user, uh, then the performance goal is likely to be based on a maximum throughput, okay, or transaction rate. So if it doesn't have a login logout system, right, then you're going to use concurrency to kind of figure out, okay, uh, we don't have a login logout, but we're going to have a look at the maximum through output of transaction rate and that means that how many people are going to go on the site how many how are they going to navigate are they easy, easily be navigatable and that kind of stuff a common example would be casual browsing of a website such as Wikipedia Wikipedia is a good example because there's no logging and log out but there's still concurrency flow there's still people logging in still not logging in I mean navigating <laughs> towards it right and navigating in between in between you know when you click on a blue letter it goes to another you know that's a concurrency that's a throughput that's a throughput that takes the person to the another to the next step right so uh there's two ways of thinking and i'm just wrapping up with what i just said you have the login log out authentication where it goes okay user comes in uh okay how's the flow working off that how's the concurrency how's the current how's it currently working its way and how's it moving out how what flow did it go server response time now the next thing is a server response time and this refers to the time taken from one system node to respond to the request of another okay a simple example would be the HTTP get request from a browser client to the web server so every time when you go for instance I'm just using that as an example is you go and go www.google.com you know that statement gets sent to a DNS server the DNS server sends it to another server and so it goes on so until you get a reply back with the actual website now this in general or a lot of times is in seconds right you get your website down in and literally seconds well you know that that seconds has got a lot of way to travel it so the first needs to travel to the name DNS server and from the name DNS server to the domain and domain and so it goes on and that's kind of when when we look at testing it's kind of looking at the server response time how long is that response time taking especially if I have a large project and I'm using Facebook as a good example uh, because you know everybody knows it understands it and it's quite big right so how are they going to test their server response time I mean are they going to do that oh yes they're going to do that because they're going to set a goal to go to test the server response time because you know um, <clears throat> you don't want people to go to facebook.com and it takes like 10 minutes to load up right so um, that is in essence having a look at, at server response time in terms of response time this is what all load testing tools actually measure right so uh, if you if you have if you look at a, a testing tool uh, that says load, uh, you know then it is what will it test? Well, it will actually test the 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 um, the load, how long it loads uh, to get where at once, right? And that's definitely what we're going to have a look at uh, with Load Runner. And there's 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 a lot out there that you can use. You can use Load Runner, Load Impact. Uh, Gatling, Blitz, Blaze Meter, J Meter, Login BSI, Neo Load, Open SDA, uh, Silk Perform. <laughs> it goes on. There's so many of them. But the one that we're going to concentrate on, Load Runner, um, is developed by HP and it's performance testing tool 